Good morning and welcome to the morning edition of MBC News with me Blessing Z Chireoka. Our top stories. It's the final day of the MCP National Convention in Ilongwe where some neck positions have been filled. President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera delegates his vice, Dr. Michael Usi, to represent him at the inauguration of Rwanda's president-elect, Paul Kagame. And the Digital Malawi project receives a significant boost following the approval of over 122 billion kwacha funding from the World Bank. Good morning once again and welcome. It's the final day of the MCP National Convention in Ilongwe where some NAIC positions have been filled. Make elective MCP elective convention chairperson Kezim Sukwa disclosed this after an announcement of preliminary results by the Malawi Electoral Commission. Emmanuel Chikonso with the details. Since Thursday evening, Malawi Congress Party MCP delegates at its ongoing 2004 elective convention in Lilongwe have been casting votes to elect leaders in different states. It's been a long Thursday night for the MCP delegates and party members who made sure to make the first phase of the voting process a success. According to the MCP convention chairperson, Kazim Sukwa, the decision to adjourn proceedings at the convention has been made to allow the members and the monitors rest and prepare for the next day of the Indaba. On whether the convention will be concluded during a period they planned, Nsukwa said the party will ponder on extension of the convention if need be. We are going to resume tomorrow. Initially we had wanted to reconvene now for um, the, the, the other positions, but you know we reckon our, our people are quite tired now, having been here for all this long. So we have given them time to go and rest so that we can reconvene here at 8 o'clock tomorrow. I believe that uh, if we can reconvene and start in time at 8 o'clock tomorrow, we should be able to finish the whole process um, uh, by the evening tomorrow. We may extend by a day. Uh, you know, this is a convention, and we don't gag people during the convention. We may extend, but that will depend on what happens tomorrow. We are open as a party. The new MCP Publicity Secretary, Jessica Buira, expressed her commitment towards shaping the party's agenda by aligning it with Malawi 2063. As far as I'm concerned, this is a chance for me to contribute at national level to show what Malawi Congress Party is doing that is in line with Malawi 2063, MIP-1 in particular. We want to show how much we are not only policy-based, but we remain focused on changing the lives of the poor. We remain focused on making sure that those who own this party, the one who are the party that is running this government, know who's, who their boss is. If you look at what our president said yesterday, we are saying we want to de-eliticize our, our, our services. We are not coming here to reinvent the wheel or feed the rich and continue extending the gap between the rich and the poor. The convention resumes Saturday morning where His Excellency the President, Dr. Lazarus Chakwera, is also expected to attend. Emmanuel Chikonso, MBC News, BICC, Lilongwe. Meanwhile, Catherine Godanhara has been elected as first vice president of the party, while Richard Chumendo Banda has been elected as the party's secretary general. The delegates have also filled several top leadership positions of the party. Maya Sojikadzula has the details in this report. Since Thursday evening, Malawi Congress Party MCP delegates at its ongoing 2004 elective convention in Lilongwe have been casting votes to elect leaders in different senior positions of the party. Among the highly contested positions during the convention were that of the first vice president, secretary general, Fabrice secretary, campaign director, and director of legal affairs, among other positions. <laughs> Speaking after the announcement, Catherine Goranahara, who has been elected as first vice president, said she will work closely with the members as one way of consolidating the party structures in readiness 
for the 2025 elections, Gotane, who is also Speaker of the National Assembly, was closely followed by engineer Vitumbiko Mumba. We're very excited and overwhelmed. It can only be God. It was not an easy fight. Um, thank God for being on my side. I'm also thanking the President and the party, Malawi Congress Party, and all the delegates for the love that they've shown to me. And uh, I don't even know wh what to do and what to thank them for what they've done to me. But God only can say thank you for me to them. We will go straight into work with our new Secretary General. That is going to be one of our important things on our agenda because we can only uh, have this um, exercise of consolidate our structures because we are preparing for another win in 2025. Taking his turn, Richard Mando Band, who has been elected as Secretary General of the Malawi Congress Party, said time has come to work collectively with all those contested during the elections as one way of strengthening the party. It was not so much tough in another way, but there was supposed to be one winner, and I want to thank God for the victory. Second, I want to thank the delegates for choosing me and imagining a winner. And I want to promise them that I will support the president, Donald Macarthur Jaguera, I will support the party, I will make sure that the party becomes vibrant and visible across the country, but also ready for 2025, making sure we win the general election, but also get more seats for members of parliament and councillors. Finally, I would like to ask everyone who competed, not only on this position, but any other position, come, let's work together. The convention is yet to elect other leadership positions in the various party portfolios. His Excellency the State President, who is also President of the Malawi Congress Party, MCP, Don Razas Chaguera has been at the convention following the proceedings. The convention is scheduled to end on Saturday. My Estoji Kadzula, MBC News, Lilongwe. President Dr. Lazarus Chaguera has dedicated Vice President Dr. Michael Osi to represent him at the inauguration of Rwanda's President-elect Paul Kagame. The event will be held on Sunday, 11th August, in Kigali, Rwanda. Among other things, the visit will deepen and strengthen the cordial bilateral relations between the two countries. The statement from Minister of Foreign Affairs says Dr. Osi will depart through Kamuz International Airport any time from now and return on Monday, 12th August, at 10 minutes to 1 through the same airport. The Digital Malawi project has received a significant boost following the approval of over 122 billion kwacha from the World Bank. Speaking in Blanda, Secretary in the Ministry of Information and Digitalization, Badwin Chiamaka, said the funds will cater for the second phase of the project. Chiamaka described the development as a remarkable stride as the country undergoes digital transformation in line with President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera's vision and the Malawi 2063 aspirations. Chiamaka explains. It's very exciting, you know, we can't be left behind as a country in terms of digitalization. And like I said earlier, you know, it is at the heart of uh, our president, uh, His Excellency, uh, Dr. Lazarus Makathe Chakwera and the government of Malawi to ensure that uh, Malawi 2063, enabler number six, where we are talking about infrastructure, ICT, this, you know, we accelerate this achievement and its attainment. So it's very exciting that we have partners who are helping us, you know, to attain this. And uh, just to talk about the successor program, the Malawi Digital Acceleration Program, it's the, the, the next program that's coming as the first one, the, the, the national digital program is phasing out. We also used to call it the, the Digital Foundation pro Project. So this one is phasing out in October. Um, it was supposed to phase out in June, but July, September, and October, this is what we call a no-cost extension because there are a few other things that were not completed. For example, the National Data Center in Lilongwe. And the next one that is coming, it means it will focus on connectivity to ensure that the fiber network uh, is, is completed uh, thoroughly 
and we have infrastructure through fiber network all over the country. We have a few miles, maybe kilometers remaining, but to also ensure that we have uh, towers all around and that we have uh, free Wi-Fi in more public institutions, especially schools and uh, other public places. So it's exciting. And Chimwemwe Matemba is the project manager. So the second project uh, is actually following uh, on the footsteps of the first one. Uh, to mean that the first project has actually attained quite a number of very uh, a number of very great achievements. So it is just more or less continuation of the current implementation arrangements, uh, implementation objectives. Uh, for example, I can give an example of the very successful Lunta the Juma initiative that has been deployed by government for the purposes of benefiting our youth in the modern environment where the internet can be used as a source of income. So this Lunta and Juma initiative, which currently benefits 19,000 plus beneficiaries, youth and women mostly, uh, is going to continue uh, in terms of benefiting even more beneficiaries and using the resources and the approaches that uh, have previously been used. Uh, another aspect is there are some uh, systems that have been deployed, that have been developed, but these need hand-holding. Uh, let me give you an example. For example, a data center is currently being deployed, being constructed in Lilongwe under the current project. But obviously, for a data center to be operational, there are a number of support activities that will need to be uh, provided for, including support staff, including uh, operational requirements, including systems, including uh, issues to do with the licenses to operate the various tools that have been uh, deployed by the contractor, and so on and so forth. The Office of the Director of Public Officers Declaration, or DPOD, is said to publish names of officers who have not complied with the law to declare their assets. Director of ODPOD, Michael Chusiwa, disclosed this during an orientation workshop for 228 declaration desk officers. Parliament set up the Office of the Director of Public Officers Declaration to help avert corruption through transparency and accountability. More details in this report. The Office of the Director of Public Officers Declaration, Audit Board, was set up 10 years ago in compliance with the international conventions like the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Director of Audit Board, Michael Yusiwa, told MBC that their office has made strides as 70% of the public officers have now declared their assets. Chiusiwa added that the office is looking for a 100% compliance rate, hence the move to name and shame all officers who are not showing interest. This year, it will be for the first time for our institution to publish names of public officers that have declared and those that have not declared. This is for the year 2022-2023. This will be published in a government gazette. It's called a compliance report. So people will know who complied, who did not comply. And chairperson of the Public Appointments Committee of Parliament, which monitors these developments, Joyce Chisulo, has expressed optimism that the training of desk officers will go a long way towards compliance. Because as a monitoring committee, what we noted is that uh, there was uh, less awareness in terms of uh, what exactly um, uh, are required to declare or the listed public officers that are to declare, but also what is it that is supposed to declare and how they are supposed to do the declarations. So having noted that gap, it's when uh, with Audible with support from UNDP, we uh, thought of having these workshops for the uh, desk officers to... The training of the 228 public officers representing 216 public institutions was supported by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, in partnership with the Malawi government. Trust Office, MBC News, Lilongwe. The Malawi Communications Regulatory Authority, MACRA, says using new innovations in service delivery can help in enhancing economic development in the country. MACRA's Director of Legal Services, Tokuzani Chembe, made the remarks during an open day in Mzuzu. Jackson Sichari reports. 
with the mission of empowering communities, fostering innovation and creating opportunities for people to thrive in the digital economy, MACRA says it has put in place measures that will enhance access to internet and basic communication services for improved delivery of services. Speaking during the ceremony, MACRA's director of legal services, Togozani Jimbe, said Malawi as a country needs to embrace digitalization for economic transformation. Whether we like it or not, digitalization is the way to go. It is no longer a choice. It's a must. We need to leapfrog in the fourth industrial revolution. Representative of different stakeholders during the ceremony, who is also the chairperson of the Media Information and Communication Committee of Parliament, Susan Dorsey, held Makara for being proactive in engaging stakeholders on enhancing digitalization and addressing their concerns. Uh, this gathering is really is really relevant, considering that as uh, a committee, uh, we have been going around uh, meeting several stakeholders, institutions, especially on the issues of uh, access to information. Uh, because I believe that this is like part of uh, sharing information. A lot of people out there are not aware of uh, what MACRA is doing, and uh, most of them they are not even aware of uh, how they can uh, maybe complain whenever they have issues. Meanwhile, MACRA says they are developing a new law to enhance cyber security for all digital space users. Jackson City, MBC News, Mzuzu. You're watching the morning edition of News with me, Blessing Z, Chirioka. Remember, you can access all MBC digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen. A reminder of our top stories. It's the final day of the MCP National Convention in Irirongwe, where some NAIC positions have been filled. President Dr. Lazarus Chakwira delegates his vice, Dr. Michael Usi, to represent him at the inauguration of Rwanda's president-elect, Paul Kagame. And the Digital Malawi project receives a significant boost following the approval of over 122 billion kwacha funding from the World Bank. Welcome back. A three-day 7th International Construction Conference held in Mangoji has concluded with resolutions to adopt national standards, encourage local production and embrace modern practices. Chief Executive Officer for the National Construction Industry Council, NCIC, Engineer Gerard Konje, said his organization will make sure that the resolutions are upheld in order for the country to achieve desired construction standards. Miriam Kaliza has the story. The National Construction Industry Council, NCIC, organized an international conference that brought together key stakeholders from the construction industry, both within Malawi and abroad. The conference aimed to address challenges in the industry and align its goals with Malawi's Vision 2063. Key discussions focused on the importance of technological innovation, strengthening legal frameworks, and promoting public-private partnerships to enhance the resilience and quality of infrastructure in the country. In his closing remarks, NCIC Chief Executive Officer Engineer Gerard Konje expressed satisfaction with the conference, stating that it exceeded all primary objectives. He was optimistic that the key stakeholders would implement the main takeaways from the conference. We have these action, action points and we have specific monitoring mechanism. And then specific entities have been assigned specific roles. So it's not just a general resolution, a resolution that has a time frame and it also have, has specific people that have been assigned to implement such a resolution. And then collaboration has been also highlighted as a major, a major component. So as NCIC, we'll be working with various stakeholders represented here. Keynote speaker Professor George Ofori from the United Kingdom highlighted Malawi's potential to achieve quality and durable infrastructure if stakeholders remain committed to their pledges. He noted the participants' undivided attention and technical expertise, calling it a positive sign for the industry's future. The NCIC should draw everybody in 
and, and you know, work with them to, to move their um, agenda forward and to move the agenda of the construction industry's development also forward because it is only through this that the industry can de um, deliver what people expect and what people, I think people deserve. Olive Kabatwaire, Africa Regional Manager and Learning Lead for COAST, the Infrastructure Transparency Initiative for Africa, praised the organizers for a well-executed conference. She expressed optimism that infrastructure transparency is achievable in Malawi and beyond. The three-day conference was held under the theme Innovate, Adapt and Excel, a quality-driven construction industry, and it attracted local participants and international stakeholders from Ghana, Zambia, Tanzania, Uganda and other countries. Miriam Kaliza, NBC News, Mangochi. Beneficiaries of the retargeted group for social cash transfer program have been advised to make proper budget for cash received for maximum benefits. Principal Secretary in the Ministry of Gender, Community Development and Social Welfare, Nefam Gala, gave the advice during case management supervision at Chimaliro Court in Tiolo. Naomi Kamuyango reports. After the supervision, it was noted that some people have encountered some challenges in accessing their money through e-payment. Some of the challenges include the blockage of their mobile lines when the beneficiaries do not buy credit for a certain period of time. Meanwhile, the principal secretary has asked the mobile company to iron out all the problems being faced through the e-cash transfer. Yeah, so indeed there were a number of challenges that were highlighted. Uh, one of the challenges was... Uh, uh, has to do with uh, uh, the SIM cards being blocked because uh, uh, most of the uh, people that are getting the money do not, uh, you know, uh, are not able to buy airtime all the time and to, to replenish their their cards all the time. So as a result of that, uh, sometimes the, their cards get blocked. So that was one of the, the challenges that they are facing. So we have had discussions with TNM Fortunately, they are right here. Uh, we have implored uh, them to uh, help uh, the beneficiaries so that uh, they can be getting their, you know, having their phones non-blocked. No, whether they they um, they they put airtime or not, uh, if there could be a special provision for our beneficiaries, then to clap up our beneficiaries, so that their phones, their SIMs, could, should not be blocked. Uh, we've uh, had that discussion with uh, TNM, and I'm sure they are going to consider that. More than 14,000 households are targeted in this phase in the district. In Cholo only, the government is funding the program to the tune of more than 4 billion kwacha a year. Meanwhile, District Commissioner for Cholo, Hudson Kupanga, has held government for the development. The Cholo, 80% of Cholo is tea estates and only 20% is Arab around, which is also in the escarpments. Now, the coming of this social cash transfer is transforming lives. And you can see from here, from the program, the people are now owning it, meaning that it's changing their lives. So the impact is really big. And we would like to commend government for introducing this social cash transfer. And it's continuing helping the poor. One of the beneficiaries, Fales Malowa, who was chosen for the program, for taking care of her grandchild with disability, says the money will assist her to buy basic necessities as well as constructing a house. More than 10 districts in the country have been targeted in this program, which will run for four years. Naomi Kamiango, NBC News, Cholo. And in business news, the Competition and Fair Trading Commission has made 90 determinations regarding unfair trading and anti-competitive business practices. Chief Executive Officer for the Commission, Lloyd Nkoma, announced this during a media briefing in Irongwe, where he said half of the cases pertain to sugar pricing. Austin Fukula has filed this report, read by Longezo Sodoka. Nkoma disclosed that all the 90 cases the Commission dealt with, 77 were related to unfair trading practices, while 13 others were on anti competitive business practices. He cited cases of unfair trading that Afri Plus Steel Malata was involved in when it received the payment of iron sheets from customers but failed to honor supply of the goods. 
Another case involved the high cost of sugar pricing by John Joe Bishop. Rosina Enterprises and Simama General Dealers were found on the wrongdoing for withholding sugar when the country was facing sugar scarcity earlier this year. Koma said these cases have been referred to the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions to institute criminal proceedings. Other cases uh, which are applications like measures and acquisitions where we have had a rejection of a transaction uh, involving uh, the proposed acquisition of Go Fresh, uh, proposed acquisition of Grain Apple. Uh, by GoFresh, which the Commission has declined, was in their wisdom, that's a transaction which is going to raise uh, serious competition concerns. These are final cases to be referred to the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions, as the Commission will now be using the new Act which empowers the Commission to administer stiffer penalties and fines to all companies and organizations involved in unfair trading practices. And in sports, FC Binyasa Big Bullets have printed 20,000 tickets for their CAF Champions League preliminary round match against Red Arrows, scheduled for August 18th at Bingo National Stadium in Ilongwe. Prez Majao has compiled this report, read by Nobit Jameson. Speaking at a press briefing in Blantyre, Bullets Acting Chief Executive Officer Albert Chigoga announced that ticket sales started on Wednesday and will not be available for purchase on the match day. Chigoga said that additional tickets may be printed on demand. Tickets will be sold in 15 locations in Lilongwe, with standard tickets priced at 5,000 kwacha and VIP tickets going at 20,000 kwacha. I will be printing more tickets on demand. Okay, Once we establish that tickets are running out in, in all the outlets, uh, will be uh, printing more tickets to replenish uh, those stocks. So I think uh, there will be no worry, uh, no one should be worried because uh, we will be printing tickets, uh, tickets progressively on demand. The Malawi Broadcasting Corporation, MPC, holds exclusive TV rights for the game. Bullets' last home game in the continental competition against TP Mazembe at Bingo National Stadium grossed 87 million kwacha. That item wraps up this edition of NBC News. A reminder of our top stories before we go. It's the final day of the MCP National Convention in Ilongwe, where some NAIC positions have been filled. President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera delegates his vice, Dr. Michael Usi, to represent him at the inauguration of Rwanda's president-elect, Paul Kagame. And the Digital Malawi project receives a significant boost following the approval of over 122 billion kwacha funding from the World Bank. I am Blessing Zi Jereuka. Thanks for watching.